Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. I know this is hard for you Americans to imagine, but please try. My name is Dr. Jim Sweetland. I'm an emergency department physician. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Dr. Jim Sweetland. I'm an emergency department physician. Unfortunately, I was at the Trump rally. I was a physician that was attending to a uh, firefighter who uh, had a fatal wound to his head, Corey Compatore. You ran over to him seconds after the shots were fired. It must have occurred to you those shots could have continued and that you could have yourself been in the line of fire running over to him. Is that something you process thought about? I truthfully didn't think about it. I truthfully had, um, there's more go. What are you waiting for? And I didn't really think about the fact I was going to get shot. It just occurred in my, in my mind. Three shots rang out. They were pops. I thought at first there were firecrackers. Uh, there was a two to three second pause, and then there was four more pops. At that point, the crowd and myself realized this was gunfire. I heard a woman cry out. She cried out saying, he's been shot, he's down. Um, at that point, a voice came to me, um, and I thought many days about this voice, but for me, I think it was God telling me to do, to do something. But at that point, we're sheltering. That's why I climbed over them to go down to coal. I met with a phenomenal doctor who was already on the scene trying to help as, much, as best as he could. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. It was obvious Corey had suffered a gunshot wound to his head. Uh, it was above his right ear. I assume it was his wife and one of his daughters um, and looking at me, and I realized performing CPR at their feet on Corey. I'll never forget the look on their face. I've, I've had the privilege of attending to people when they've been dying in the emergency department. And the look on their face was that of horror, but it also was a little bit of hope. And the only thing I could say to him, I blurred out, he's going to get the help he needs. And then I felt a tap on my shoulder, I was being tapped out. And I turned to see probably the two biggest Pennsylvania State Troopers I've ever seen. And they kind of said, we got this. They picked up Corey like a paperweight. And I gotta tell you, I've never seen anybody get evacuated in that condition off a grandstand as quickly as these guys took him down. There was EMS with the stretcher down at the bottom. They got Corey right on the stretcher and got him out. You're a doctor, you've seen a lot in your many years of practice. Is this different than the other cases you've handled at the hospital? It is different. Uh, this was raw. This was me providing initial care for someone who's down in the field. I think God uh, guided me. Thank you.
Be quiet. Why are you guys so anti-dictators? Imagine if America was a dictatorship. Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could have rigged elections. You could lie about why you go to war. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. I know this is hard for you Americans to imagine. But please, try! Did you know that the Democrats and Republicans used to be a single merged party? We all know the saying, two wings of the same bird, but it goes even further. If you suggest that these parties are controlled by the same people in the modern day, you usually get labeled as a conspiracy theorist. You're crazy for believing in some shadowy cabal that's pulling all the strings. The Illuminati or Freemasons are in control of everything. Usually this is met with laughter and ridicule from those who are completely engrossed with the mainstream narrative. However, where do you think these ideas came from? Would it surprise you to know that the very first real political party, technically the one with the first real platform, was actually the anti-Masonic party? This is a historical fact, and this history usually gets swept under the rug. Not too many people are aware of this unless you thoroughly have studied politics, and even then it's merely a footnote. This history is very surprising because it sheds light into the early days of politics in America and the origin of all these conspiracy theories, which are not conspiracies. They're genuine concerns of elites and corporations influencing what we believe to be a democracy. This isn't new and was literally the platform of the first real political party.